You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello, and welcome back to The Foundation Presents. My name is Mike Schramm. I'm a member of the board of the Foundation for West Hartford Public Schools, a 20-year-old nonprofit organization dedicated to funding grants that expand upon the typical curriculum taught in the West Hartford Public School System. Over our 20 years of existence, we've funded $1.4 million in grants, and in this year alone, we've handed out over 60 grants to the tune of over $80,000 and all of that money comes from local businesses and families and individuals within the broader West Hartford community. I'm here today to introduce you to three educators from the West Hartford Public School System who will talk a bit about the grants that they received and how they impacted the students and the curriculum during the year. I'd like to introduce Shannon McNeese, a library media specialist at Sedgwick Middle School, who's here to talk about two grants that she's received, Guys Skype and Skype with Nutmeg Authors. Now, Shannon, can you give us a little background on those two grants? Absolutely. Um, once we realized at Sedgwick that we had the ability to Skype, once Wi-Fi was in place, mm -hmm. um, we started to really think about how we deliver author visits to our kids. Mm -hmm. um, having a live author is an amazing opportunity for students. Um, but when we realized that we could Skype and that there were several authors that would Skype for free, we thought we would um, try it out. Mm -hmm. By writing the grant for the foundation, um, we started by looking at the Connecticut Nutmeg authors. So every okay. year, Connecticut has a, a state book award. Yeah. Um, there are four levels, and mm -hmm. at the middle school, we encourage the kids to read two of the levels. Okay. And we thought it would be great to Skype with some of those authors mm -hmm. for that year. Um, and so some of them were free and some were pricey. Okay, of and course. And <laughs> so I worked with the English teachers to mm -hmm. see which ones would be really appropriate for their kids. Mm -hmm. And we picked two for sixth grade, two for seventh grade, two for eighth grade, and we okay. wrote our grant and got it. And we were very excited. Great. And so every student at Cedric was able to Skype with an author at some point? Yes, every student was part of a great. Skype at some point. That's, That's exactly excellent. right. We ran six, one each okay. month. Mm -hmm. Some were after school and some were during school so that we could really target every single person. Okay. Um, and it was amazing. Yeah. It was more amazing, I think, even than having one live author for an hour. Why do you say that? Because you felt like you were sitting in the room having a conversation with them. It okay. wasn't so much that they were presenting, mm -hmm. but they were in the room sitting and talking to the kids and the kids were allowed to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And because you're sort of, the kids would come up and be face to face, mm -hmm. it was a very personal interaction. Yeah. Um, and the students just responded absolutely beautifully. Now, why is that personal interaction more important than, say, writing emails or letters to an author? That's a great question. Um, I think something about a kid, you know, having his question answered live mm -hmm. um, with other kids and then being able to ask a follow-up question mm -hmm. live in the moment. Maybe they thought of something based on another kid yeah. or based on something the author had previously said. Mm -hmm. It was just very, um, very interactive. Yeah. And the kids just responded incredibly. And the authors were excited to do it too? Oh my gosh, these authors were so excited. That's like, great. Learning kids' names mm -hmm. and making it fun. Um, they shared all kinds of things with us. We had several authors who gave us cover reveals for their next book. Oh, which great. Which the kids were like oh, so sure. incredible yeah. about. Um, we had an author reveal a title that hadn't been public yet to the Ooh. kids. They showed the kids a lot of things such as um, rejection letters. Okay. And editing uh -huh. that the, um, what an edited piece, they, what they get back all the time from their editors. So mm -hmm. they held it up. Kate Messner was great. She showed us all these scratches and scribbles. Oh, wow. And they all really talked about, you know, the process mm -hmm. of writing. So the kids come with questions. The questions are always like, how did you become a writer? Mm -hmm. You know, what would you say to people who want to be writers? Yeah. But to be able to see it, rather than having author just up on the stage, having her show it, like, right on the big screen, all those scribbles, mm -hmm. 
just had a really profound impact on the kids and their thoughts about writing. Oh, I'm sure. Having that real life conversation must have been really meaningful for them. Now, did all of the students read the books before the authors came in, or, or did they read all of the books for all the authors, or just That's one a or great two? question. Um, in many cases, um, they, uh, lots of the audience had read the books because okay. they're the nutmegs and we promote them all year. Sure, which makes sense. But we never had one where every kid had, written, had read the book okay. in this Skype case with the nutmegs. Okay. Um, certainly, after the nut, the Skypes, mm -hmm. my nutmegs flew off the shelves. Oh yeah, then I can the kids, imagine. Then I couldn't keep them on the shelves because yeah. we're so excited about the author and mm -hmm. the author talking about their books. Was there a common theme to the books, or were they all over the place? No, they were all over the place. Action, adventure, sci-fi, historical fiction. Oh, that's great. That must have really engaged a wide array of students, which made it so that you could bring in every student who wanted to come in to, to meet with one of the authors. Absolutely, and the um, Nutmegs are very um, conscientious too about diversity and making sure okay. there's diverse authors and characters represented. Mm -hmm. um, and so that also speaks to Sedgwick's audience yeah. as well. Yeah, and that's wonderful. On our previous episode of The Foundation Presents, we talked with a library media specialist from one of the elementary schools who brought in an author who wrote books from the point of view of Asian American mm -hmm. students and I remember in my own time reading kids' books, there was a striking lack of diversity in any of the books. They just didn't reflect the world around me, but it seems like there's maybe a shift in, in terms of having a more representative uh, characters and storylines in the books. Did that hold true for this as well? Absolutely. In fact, we picked authors to give a diverse view for the kids. That's great. And now Guy's Skype, was that part of the same grant as Skype with Nutmeg Authors, or was that different? Nutmeg was so successful and we were so excited that I decided to write a grant the next year. Okay. Um, and this year I worked with the reading teachers, mm -hmm. and we really targeted um, Guy readers. Okay. You know, it's, it's somehow it's harder to get boys to mm -hmm. check out and read books in middle school than it is girls. Okay. Um, which, you know, is sort of a trend you hear about, yeah. but just delivering that general enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we decided to really target some of our, our, our guys and especially mm -hmm. some of our reluctant readers. Okay. And so we wrote one called Guy Skype and we had two unbelievable authors to Skype with. We had Kwame Alexander mm -hmm. who won the Newbery for his book The Crossover oh, wow. at the same time that we were Skyping with him. Oh wow, that's exciting. The biggest that's honor exciting. you can get in children's literature. His oh, book yeah. The Crossover is written like rap. It's like rap oh. music. Oh wow. And it's about basketball. Okay. And it hooked in so many guy readers mm -hmm. that really hadn't ever thought they would like to read. Yeah, clearly engaged the the boys specifically not that there wouldn't be girls there who'd be interested in a rapper basketball but definitely skewed absolutely and, and girls were invited too we didn't yeah. exclude oh, anybody oh good that's great absolutely yeah it was yeah. it was for for everybody yeah but everybody predominantly was male audience but we were really trying yeah. to sort of target target mm -hmm. the guys yeah and, and it was hugely successful did you find that the books from the authors went off the shelves at a similar rate as the I had to buy I have twenty four copies of the crossover and they would be You're all kidding. checked out at the same time wow and wait lists wow that's yeah. tremendous. Yeah, well, and then our next guy Skype was with Tim Green. Mm -hmm. um, he is an author who played football for the Atlanta Falcons. Oh, great. And then went on to become a TV broadcaster. Okay, so similar vein. And wrote for grown-ups and started writing for kids with all okay. sports books. Okay, great. Um, and he was super inspirational as mm -hmm. well. Um, and his grant, he Skyped free as long as we bought X amount of copies for the kids. Okay. Um, so we gave every kid who came to the site Skype an autographed copy of his books. Oh, that's wonderful. So even if they hadn't read them before, they all took an autographed that's copy great. of his and books then, with them. And then you don't run into the problem of kids wanting to check out the books and you having a limited supply. That's, I had like 200 paperbacks to give out. Wow. It was amazing. That's great. And, and he, did you give them all out? We gave them all out. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And he talked a lot about, you know, writing is like sports. That mm -hmm. takes a lot of practice. And the more you practice and the more you read, the better you get. Yeah. Um, and it was just really, he just was so encouraging to the kids about mm -hmm. you have to read, you have to I'm do well sure. in school, you can't just think you're going to go to the N NFL. Yeah. How wonderful for them. Yeah, it was very fun. Now, do you see that Skype and other technologies are being incorporated more in other classrooms in Cedric as well? Well, we're definitely trying to encourage it. Um, okay. I did, I was able to help social studies teachers said, we want to Skype with somebody too. And so we do a lot of research in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And we found an author who writes um, nonfiction. Okay. In fact, he writes narrative nonfiction, which is okay. um, an SBACS skill that we're always trying to read. Sure. Um, and he wrote a book called Lincoln's Grave Robbers about okay. a, a true story of um, some bad guys who tried to dig up Lincoln's body and, oh, wow. and hold it hostage. And I've so, never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, so we got the whole eighth grade to come and Skype with Steve Scheinkin and ask him about his research process. Oh, great. And that was with social studies. So I'm definitely yeah. trying to spread the love because uh -huh. Skype is available and a lot of these authors are really excited about Skyping with schools. Yeah, and what a great way for the students to interact with the authors.
Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Shannon. I really appreciate you coming on and learning about some of your grants. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Now I'd like to introduce Anthony Wasley, a science teacher at Hall High School who's going to talk about his grant, Enhancing Student Learning with Coral Reef Aquariums. Now, Anthony, can you give me a little overview of your grant? Sure. So um, it's specifically for my marine science course. Mm -hmm. And what the kids did this year is they built this aquarium from scratch. Oh, wow. Um, so they did the PVC, uh, PVC plumbing for it. They we looked at all the pieces of equipment that are in the fish tank. Wow. Um, it's a 90 gallon saltwater reef aquarium. Mm -hmm. It's got two 250 watt metal halides on it wow. to grow these corals. There's already right now about 20 corals in there. Okay. And um, the, the kids did the aquascape for it. They put mm -hmm. all the rocks, decided where they go. Wow. Um, the kids picked out what fish to put in the tank. They mm -hmm. got to name the fish. Um, so the grant really helped us start this up. Okay. And from there, um, we've been having a lot of different companies have been donating mm -hmm. different pieces of equipment to the tank. Our sand was donated, our salt was donated, um, different test kits were donated. Oh, wow. And, um, and then hobbyists from all around the state of Connecticut have been giving us corals oh. as well. Oh, yeah, that's so, great. So sometimes I get like an email like, hey, you're still in school? Can I drop off a coral? Huh. I'm like, yeah, sure. Wow. So this is a real community project. It's totally a community project. That's so right. What was the purpose of having the students build the aquarium as opposed to just buying one that was already built? Um, I love watching kids do hands-on stuff. Okay. Now they they have so much ownership to this tank, mm -hmm. and they feel like it's theirs, and it gets them to keep maintaining the aquarium too. So sure. all the kids in the classroom have different jobs. Okay. There's over forty jobs, different oh, wow. jobs. Okay. Um, from feeding the tank to cleaning it to doing a water change testing it mm -hmm. and we also keep track of everything on the marine aquarium uh, through this program called apex fusion okay so the tank has probes in it and is digitally connected mm -hmm. online so if i had my phone on me right now i could literally just start tinkering with the tank oh that's and turning great. the lights off and, <laughs> and doing all these different things oh, and wow. it also monitors uh -huh. temperature salinity oxygen reduction reduction potential and wow. ph okay. and the kids can see this all as well oh, at any wow. point in time now they can't turn on the light and yeah. stuff but okay, they can that's good. view it yeah um in addition to that uh the tank is 24 7 on live stream on oh, youtube wow. okay so if you go on my youtube channel wasley science you can see the tank mm -hmm. and just see how it's doing. Yeah. And like watch the fish move around. Oh, wow. And so all these tasks that you describe, are they for the students in your marine bio class? Or? Yes. Okay. They're for the students in the marine science class. The students in my earth science class also get to see. It's not like I put a tarp okay. or something over That's the good. tank when they come <laughs> in. But um, they're the ones that mainly take care of the tank. And okay. All the units in class are connected to the saltwater tank because we do physical oceanography, chemical, geological and biological. Oh wow. All connects to the tank. Wow. Okay, so you're involving a lot of students in this. How many yeah. how many have an actual hands-on job in the, um, the aquariums? Last uh, 32 this this wow. semester. Okay. And I, it's a semester course right now. Okay. So there were 35 and then 32, so Okay. All the jobs had to in January I had to reassign all yeah. the jobs. Yeah. <laughs> So the, the fish were like a little bit in limbo for yeah, a couple sure. of days. Yeah, a little worried. Yep. So how do you keep the fish alive during spring break, say, or over the summer? Ah, well, um, I, fee I can do it from my phone. Oh, so, so you can do everything remotely? Yeah, I can do oh, everything wow. remotely. So there, the only thing I can't do is I can't do a water change okay. right now. I could probably set it up so that I could okay. at some point, but I have an automatic feeder on the tank and I can just, I have it set every day at 2.30, mm -hmm. the fish get fed, but the students also feed the fish more food, mm -hmm. but they get pellets every day at 2.30. Okay. So during the break, they just have a pellet diet oh, and they're okay. fine. They don't really care. Okay. But the uh, tank's also automatically topped off. So there's like a float valve switch. So whenever it hits the sensor, it kicks on a pump and brings okay. in more water into the tank. So oh, as great. water evaporates, more water goes in. Oh, that's great. So you don't have to worry about it if you're gone for a week or something yeah. like that. Okay. It's good to check on the tank. Like in the summer, I'll check on it like once a week. Okay. That, that infrequently? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so why a saltwater aquarium with coral as opposed to a saltwater without or a freshwater? That's a really good question. So I, for years, I did Long Island Sound aquariums, mm -hmm. and I would just 
I have connections with people at Avery Point, and they would catch animals. I put in the tank and then release them back. Sure, that kind of thing. But um, climate change is a huge topic right now, mm -hmm. and um, ocean acidification is a really big deal. And coral coral bleaching is mm -hmm. a huge thing going on. Um, Ninety percent of the corals in Australia died this year, or, or, or due to bleaching. And that really? doesn't necessarily mean they're dead. They're kind of in this like purgatory thing when the, uh, the algae in them leaves and then it could potentially come back, but it takes anywhere from like 10 years. Wow. And the waters just become so warm in areas that the corals are dying. Okay. And so bringing a saltwater aquarium into my classroom mm -hmm. I mean, most kids are like, what's a coral? They, yeah. they don't even know. They yeah. don't even know what it looks like or what it is. I confess I am in that crowd as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, corals are, they're a lot, they're related to jellyfish and they're in the same phylum as jellyfish and the okay. Nigerians, um, but they stand still instead of jellyfish move around. Mm -hmm. But they, they have this symbiotic bond with algae that um, makes them all bright and co colorful, mm -hmm. and the algae uh, produce, uh, photosynthesizes and gives them food. Oh, wow, okay. So they're very creative in how they live and thrive. Mm -hmm. And do you have other f fish and other animals in there aside from the coral, or is it just? Uh, yeah, we have, we have like five or six fish in there okay. right now. One fish I haven't seen over the break on oh. the live stream, so I don't know oh, if he's taking leave. a break <laughs> yeah. or not. Um, but yeah, the, the, we have some we have a clownfish, a mm -hmm. pair of clownfish. We have a wrasse and okay. and a tain that cleans all the algae around. Okay. And there's hermits and snails in there too. Okay, so it's more than just the fish. Yeah, it's more than just the fish. Okay. And the cor it's it's the whole community because that's what makes a coral reef uh, so special is it's just this big vast community full of different animals. Okay. And plants. Yeah. And do you find that the students who have worked with the tank are more interested in marine biology or in the study of coral reefs than they were beforehand? Absolutely. Um, a lot of kids that come into my marine science class, they're kids that either really want as much science as possible or they might be like avoiding physics or chemistry because okay. in one way or another they feel that they can't science okay. for some reason. And they come in um, and see this uh, opportunity for them to really see animals in mm -hmm. the classroom and interact with them and feed them and they get so much out of it yeah um just like learning how corals grow mm -hmm. i mean they corals grow six inches a year if i grew six oh, wow. inches a year i would be 15 and a half feet tall at yeah. this point yeah I, I mean that's just that in itself they can go each week and see the tanks different that's pretty incredible yeah what a great experience for the students to learn and um Obviously, this will be an ongoing project, but do you plan on bringing in any other students or? Uh... Um, I plan on, I mean, someday I want a tank room. I'm not going to lie. I really? want my room just full of tanks as okay. the kids walk in. Yeah. So year by year, I'll figure out how I can just plumb more tanks into this system mm -hmm. and make it bigger and bigger as I get more corals growing. Yeah. Um, I can just basically, I want to start like what's called a coral farm. Okay. And as my corals grow, I can frag more corals and mm -hmm. grow more corals and more corals yeah. and then get them out to Connecticut so people oh, wow. don't have to pull more corals from the reef. Yeah. Well, I look forward to reading that grant proposal as well. Anthony, <laughs> thank you so much for coming no on. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Kristen Pildes, a first grade teacher at Bugby Elementary School, who's here to talk about her artist in residence grant. Now, Kristen, can you tell me a little bit about the grant? Sure, thank you so much for having me. Um, we're welcoming Juan Day Pei, an artist in residence, mm -hmm. okay. who um, we've been really fortunate to have back a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, he's an artist, storyteller, author, and he does a lot with music and mm -hmm. um, art in the classroom. So basically, he comes out for a week um, each year mm -hmm. and works with the kids for five days doing um, really hands-on engaging um, activities with okay. art and music. Oh, they get a chance. It's um, he's a very captivating storyteller. So mm -hmm. he tells wonderful stories. He's able to use um, a lot of different um, props and and African um, creations that he's made. For example, like he'll bring out drums, bells, things that he's created with him. Teaching the kids how to. Um, uh, 
work together as a team oh, okay. and learn uh, musical numbers yeah. as well. Oh, wonderful. So they also work with the continent of Africa map and they're okay. able to do art as well as geography learning, oh. which is really neat. Yeah. Um, every day he helps them to learn different parts of the map mm -hmm. and they and he teaches them some of the Liberian art that he's learned. Um, okay. He's originally from West um, West Africa and Liberia. Okay. And um, so he likes to bring some of that into what he's doing, that cultural experience. Mm -hmm. Does he live in Connecticut now? He does. Okay, yes. great. So it's easy for him to get up for the yes, week. Yes, he's in the greater Hartford area. Yeah. Oh, well, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And so what kind of art does he have the students do? Um, so they, they actually start out by working with the map of Africa and okay. then they use the the map of Africa to create their own um, artistic expression with it, which oh, is pretty neat. Yeah. They also do some um, stick figure drawings okay. and he teaches them some basic um, um, information about how to show perspective in with the drawings okay. as well. Mm -hmm. um, he teaches them some of the history um, that goes along with it, which mm -hmm. is really neat. Um, and they also create um, some of their um, art with some of the instruments that they're learning about as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is all encompassing in the arts. There's music, there's yes. art, there's also non-arts, there's geography. and, and yes. um, So that to me sounds like a wonderful experience for the students to have and this has happened multiple years in a row? It has. Okay. In fact, he's a little bit of a celebrity in our community. <laughs> oh, great. So it's really neat when he comes to the school, the older mm -hmm. kids, you know, go by and they're so excited to say oh, do hello they? to one day. Oh, that's great. Yes, yeah, so we've had him out for um, another event in, in, at the school as well mm -hmm. as a storyteller. Yeah. Um, and it's just great to have him back every year. It's sort of that, it's become that first grade experience mm -hmm. that's so memorable for the kids. Yeah. That everyone gets a chance to participate in. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, you, do you ever let the kids who are not in first grade participate just because they remember him? And you they... know, they hear the drums and the music <laughs> and they, they always try to come back down, kind of peek mm -hmm. in, right? Because yeah. it's, it's I'm sure they're jealous. so nostalgic yeah, for I them. I would mm -hmm. be jealous if that were me. <laughs> and I am not what you would call a great artist, but I would definitely want to be involved in that he if I could. He has incredible teachings. Everybody can do what he's doing though. He really works well with the kids. Mm -hmm. To engage them and help them where they are, mm -hmm. and to um, have a result that they're really happy about. Yeah, yeah. And I see that you brought some books. Is he an author as well as an artist? He is. So he co-authored um, at least three books that I know of, um, and one of them is Head, Body, Legs. Okay. Um, again, the stories often have that teamwork. This one in particular, that teamwork component, where it okay. talks about how everyone has to come together to really make a big difference. Yeah. Um, and then also Mrs. Chicken and the Hungry Crocodile. Okay. Yeah, and is this a similar now, teamwork story? or This one in particular is a little bit of being uh, using more of cleverness okay. to, um, so the chicken did not get eaten okay. <laughs> by the hungry well, croc <laughs> crocodile. So she uses her skills to escape. <laughs> okay. And are these African stories that he's retelling for the students or yes. are they just his own creations? Um, they're retold. Um, so so um, Wande Pei um, is... Um, has learned a lot of his storytelling actually from his grandmother oh, and okay. the Don people um, where he lives in, where he lived in Liberia, mm -hmm. um, pretty much did oral storytelling. Oh, really? And so there's many of the stories that are retold and he comes, when he comes into the classroom, mm -hmm. he um, always tells each day, he'll tell a different story. Oh, that's great. Um, and it's just fascinating to hear him speak yeah. and what he comes up with. And it always has a really nice lesson to it. Mm -hmm. Now, does he rotate between the first grade classes or is he with all of them all at once? Um, he comes for the five day week okay. and he goes to each class every day, about okay. an hour a day. Oh, great. And then at the end of the week, which is nice, is he's able to um, do a perform. He welcomes the families in oh, so that. Oh, excellent. Yeah, they can do a performance um, and the kids could show their music and, mm -hmm. and he does a storytelling for the parents. Oh, as that's well. so nice that the parents yeah. get to see the product of the grant and see how mm -hmm. excited they're kids are and getting involved. We showcase their artwork. Oh, and that's excellent. Oh, mm -hmm. how great. Um, and how does this tie in with the broader curriculum of the first grade year? Sure. So it connects a lot to um, our English language arts speaking and listening goal. Okay. Um, one, of the, one of them is um, being able to listen to stories or other media and things presented mm -hmm. and ask, uh, answer questions about the stories. Okay. So we do some of that in the classroom as well. Yeah. And um, also it connects a lot to their geography and their civics um, and their civics and um, 
uh, unit as well. Okay. So it kind of goes in citizenship unit. Yeah. It goes along with um, that teamwork component and knowing the rules and responsibilities of the of the classroom and the mm -hmm. broader community and again working together. So some of that team aspect that he brings into his teaching. Yeah. Um, but also using the map to um, go through different locations and mm -hmm. being able to get more comfortable with their map skills is important. Too. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. sounds like a wonderful learning experience for the students. And do they have the opportunity to stay connected with him once he's no longer in the school? Is there like a letter writing or anything like that? Sure. Well, um, well, he has a website and oh, he's very easily reachable okay. in that way as well. Um, but we're, we always, when he comes out, we're so excited to have him. We say, when are you oh, available yeah. next year? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we want to be able to bring this cultural experience to the children and it really mm -hmm. connects nicely with our goals of um, making cultural citizens as yeah, well. Yeah, of so, course. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I would hope that you'll be reapplying for the grant again this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, yes, we have already. <laughs> Great, excellent. Well, I'll be very excited to read the application, and I think that it's so important for the students to learn about how they can be citizens in the world. We see a lot of the grants where students will learn about a culture that they are unfamiliar with or meet people from a different background than theirs, and especially in this increasingly global world that seems so crucial to their upbringing. And do you get a feedback from them at all that makes you feel like this is the right thing for them? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, the children are just so engaged and so excited to learn something that is different and yeah. and having that experience I'm and sure. being able to connect it to some of their um, culture as well. And we often have them reflect and journal about, you know, what it is that they kind of gleaned from it. Okay. And, and it's a great thing for them. Yeah. yeah. Is there any one takeaway that is common throughout all of their responses? Um, just, I mean, having so much fun and that they were able to see, you know, kind of experience something that was very different. A mm -hmm. lot of times they're, you know, they don't have that opportunity to um, really get hands on with the artwork, with the yeah. instruments and um, having a chance to, um, they just love one day. <laughs> well, that's great. I think that's the, <laughs> the overall takeaway. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for coming on The Foundation Presents. I really enjoyed hearing about the grant. Thank you. It was nice, nice to come out as well. Thank you. I'd like to thank the three educators one more time who came onto the program this evening, as well as the audience who tuned in. Thank you so much for your support for the foundation. And if you would like to support us by making a gift, please go to fwhps.org. Every gift counts, and we're just doing our best to make an impact on the lives of students in West Hartford. Thank you.